Okay, guys, we're going to get started. Uh, my name is Christy Ruck. I'm a senior product manager at Instructure. Despite what the app may have told you about my secret identity as a Vancouver Public School instructional designer, that surprised me too. Hey, if you got, you know, like, I could have another job. Who knows? Um, yeah, so I'm going to pretend like that's my secret identity this week. Um, so I've been in a, at Instructure for about three years. And during that time, I have traveled around to visit with a lot of you guys and uh, talk with your instructors and your students. And I'm going to introduce you to a feature today that will be released this fall. And this feature was architected by your feedback. And I know that sounds a little weird because it's not a direct feature that you asked for, but um, I'm going to sort of... I'm going to sort of walk you through how we ended up at this new feature, which you may have seen a sneak peek of in Mitch Benson's presentation. Um, but before I show the feature, um, we're going to go through uh, a little sort of, this is how we do it, this is how we get to that feature. And we're going to start with a um, series of video clips. It's an episode of a television show, and I've pieced together clips so that it kind of tells the story of that episode. Uh, it's about three minutes long, so, you know, kick back. And it's, uh, it, so the whole, all the clips together will tell a story. Homer, meet my team of engineers. They're going to build your car. Hiya, team. Now, boys and girls, this project is our top priority. Everything else is on hold. I don't want to see anything until it's finished. Well, but, sir, that's Direct all your questions to Mr. Homer Simpson, the man with the vision, the man who's going to bust this company out of its rut, the man who's going to change American transportation forever. So, uh, what kind of car would you like, Mr. Simpson? I don't know. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Just a little further! Just a little further! Lisa, if you don't behave, we'll turn this car right around and go home. Go! All right, you eggheads! I want a place in this car to put my drink! Sir, the car has a beverage holder. Hello! Hello, Einstein! I said a place to put my drink! You know those super slakers they sell in the Quickie Mart? The cup is this big! Extremely large beverage holder. And I'm not done yet. You know that little ball you put on the aerial so you can find your car in the parking lot? That should be on every car. A little ball. And some things are so snazzy they never go out of style. Like tail fins and bubble dome. I want a horn here, here, and here. You can never find a horn when you're mad. And they should all play La Cucaracha. And do, Mr. S. And sometimes the kids are in the back seat. They're hollering. They're making you nuts. There's got to be something you can do about that. Maybe a built-in video game would keep them entertained? You're fired! What is my brother paying you for? What about a, a separate soundproof bubble dome for the kids with optional restraints and muzzles? Bullseye! And another thing, when I gun the motor, I want people to think the world is coming to an end. Rum, rum, rum! No, 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 no! Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed stockholders, members of the press, your holiness, tonight we are going to witness automotive history. All my life, I have searched for a car that feels a certain way. Powerful like a gorilla, yet soft and yielding like a Nerf ball. Now at last, I have found it. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the car designed for the average man, the Homer. <gasps> Any questions? What does this monstrosity cost? Jerry, what's the sticker price? $82,000! This monstrosity cost $82,000? What have I done? I mean, the zoo was fun, but I'm ruined! <laughs> In 
in today's dollars, it would be $128,000. <laughs> I actually have the matchbox car of that car sitting above my kitchen sink because I use this example often when I'm talking about uh, how to product, how to do what I do. Um, so, um, oh, let's see. Oh, sorry. We'll get there. All right. So um, let's talk a little bit about what happened. So Herb, that's Homer's brother. This is actually the episode where you learn that this is Homer's brother, um, for all you Simpsons nerds. Um, he enlists the help of Homer to help him buy a, to help him design like a new innovative car, um, but that doesn't really work out very well. Uh, and I think there's two flaws in this formula. It's not that Homer's the wrong guy; it's that Homer is the only guy. And in a lot of ways, Herb was ahead of his time um, because he was talking to people who actually use the product. The problem is he just wasn't talking to enough people who use the product. Um, so, if we were to change the equation and add more people, that doesn't, that still doesn't quite get us to where we're going to have that sweet new innovative car. Uh, because if you just add more people and don't put any, any other restraints on the situation, you're just going to have more features. More people are going to have more ideas about more features. So the second problem is really that there was no, that, that Herb let Homer put every single feature that he could think of and a lot of like gut reactions um, to feature requests into the car. And this is a little non sequitur, but can you, anyone guess how many features we've ever had, we've had all time in the community? Oh. <laughs> 7,500. Um, and I think we can all agree that Canvas would be a little bit suckier if it had 7,500 more features in it. Um, so this kind of illustrates what our problem is here, right? You, you need another gatekeeper. You need something else to help with uh, filtering down all of these features. And to be fair, those 7,500 features, sometimes the features all come in and you all have a universal voice. You're like, we need this thing and you all articulate it the same way, you ask for it the same way, you state the problem in the same way, it's really clear. And when that happens, we build it. I don't know if you guys saw this in the last release, the duplication of assignments. It's a really good example of you all having a really universal voice in a feature that you're looking for. Um, so we have duplicating assignments, duplicating pages right now, we're working on discussions and modules and more duplication in more places. So this one, um, straightforward request, straightforward response. That's not usually how it happens though. Um, we get a feature idea, we'll hear a comment, there are questions that come in, and eventually you start over time piecing together sort of some kind of common theme that's happening. There's like some overlap and it's that little overlap spot where we want to start pushing, where we're like, what's going on here? There seems to be some sort of common theme happening. Um, and that's, it, this is like not the straightforward duplicating assignment request. Um, so when I come to your schools uh, to visit, we usually design interviews ahead of time where we can, uh, where we're very targeted. We want to find out what are your gradebook problems? What are the problems you have when you're building a course? And inevitably, in every single interview I've ever had, um, people will say, hey, can I ask you a question that's like not about gradebook? And I'm like, sure. Um, and those, like, those sort of non sequitur questions and comments started having sort of a theme to them. Um, and it's that theme that sort of, uh, those off-topic themes that I'm gonna sort of take you through a few of them here. First from instructors, how do I get more things on the to-do list? Um, why is recent feedback at the bottom of the dashboard? There's, I spent all this time trying to give them good feedback, but it's not surfaced enough for students in, in Canvas. I use differentiated assignments and it takes forever to figure out where like who has what do today, because they're, so, all, they're all differentiated. Um, lots of to-do lists, this is how it should be ranked. 
we need to surface the uh, importance of it more often. Um, this one is probably the most common thing I've heard. <laughs> um, and then this one is one I've observed a lot. Assignments and events as workarounds just to get it on the calendar and on the to-do list. Because these assignments are non-submission, non-graded assignments. And whenever I ask, why do you have a non-submission, non-graded assignment? Because I just need my students to do it, and if it doesn't show up on the to-do list or on the calendar, they're not gonna do it. So we talked to some students. Not shockingly, Characters play a lot here. I hope you guys have seen The Simpsons. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, a lot of focus on the to-do list. And we weren't even asking them about the to-do list. We'd just say, hey, how do you decide what you're gonna work on when you have homework? To-do list and calendar. Like fourth graders and graduate students, all the way through, all of them. That's where they're going. It's just <laughs> Ralphie. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I have lots of courses, and the only place I can go in Canvas to see across all my courses is the calendar and the to-do list, so that's where I go. Sorry. So we started, we had an idea, what could we do that would surface, that would solve this problem? Because this problem isn't just from the student's perspective, and it's not just from the instructor's perspective. Um, so we started doing some testing. We went through a lot of iterations. Um, and uh, before I show you where we ended up, I just want to go back to our equation here. We started with the to-do list. Um, we tried to narrow in on what the problem was. Uh, we did a lot of user testing, and we ended up with this really cool new dashboard option. Um, so this is, I'm going to show you this for real as a student. Um, so there's an option right here when I log in. Can you guys see this? I'm going to try and make it big. Can you see it all right? So then no. <laughs> all right, so here's, this is just, this is uh, just my beta environment. Um, and so this, this is a fall release. We'll go to the list view. And there's a couple of things here that you might notice. The first thing is, did you see this page on my to-do list? It's a page. You can tell me to read it. You can tell me what day to read it. Um, there's also some completed things, but I can bring them back. So like, just because I dismissed it on my to-do list doesn't mean it's gone forever. I just already submitted it, so we checked it off for you. Um, and next time I come back, it'll be collapsed again. There's also an announcement on my to-do list. So I'm not going to miss that thing. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how to do these things. So it automatically will show me today, but I can scroll into the future and see tomorrow. And I can keep going. And it tells me the days I don't have anything yet. Um, and this new activity at the button with the broken icon, try and pretend like you don't see the broken icon. Um, this is any time I have a new grade or new feedback. And since we just built our own doc viewer, we'll be able to let students know when they have new annotations on the doc, which is pretty cool. So see this missing tag? This is another thing we did. Um, we tested a lot of ways to get students to see when they have something missing. And you would not believe it, man. We would put it in bright red, flashing, totally past it, didn't even look at it. See that little five? They all clicked on it. It's the first place they go. What is that? Oh, I have stuff missing. Like every single kid, it was awesome. Um, so see this even in odd numbers that was missing? Oops. Um, so that it's, that's on here too. And I can dismiss it, but it'll still be on my, uh, my list up here. As, as, as missing, sorry, I just scrolled up. I am really bad at using this trackpad, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's still missing even though I dismissed my notification about it, it's still missing. Um, so we're gonna try as hard as we can to make sure they know it is for real missing. 
Um, and with the new gradebook stuff, which I will be presenting about tomorrow at 10, um, we're gonna give you manual ways of marking things missing. So you're gonna be able to really get it in their face that it's missing. Um, so one other thing that I think is kind of cool, uh, if you look at my today, do you see this to-do? I added that for myself as a student. I can add stuff to a course, so I can say like, what's a, what's a reminder for somebody's course? Tell me something to remember to do. Huh? A meeting? Okay. Group meeting. Group meeting in biology. How about that? So now I have a reminder that I have a group meeting, which will also show up on my calendar. Woo! So these are like myself, my own reminders. Um, now eventually we also want to allow students for those institutions that don't have any due dates, we want to let students put their own sort of to-do dates on them, so not do-do, with the ability for teachers to override that with their own due dates. Um, so let's see, oh, I'm gonna show you that page that was showing up. Sorry, this is all in beta, so we get the pink line. See this little add to student to do? So announcements will work the same way, except that instead of um, add to student to do, they'll just show up on the day you announce them or the delay posting day. Um, and we have a teacher version that's not quite built yet, um, but we have a teacher version of this dashboard, so you'll be able to see, as an instructor, everybody who has something due today. Um, so if you have, uh, you know, like an, an assignment, it'll say assigned to these people. So there will be no question what is showing up on a student's to-do list. If it's showing up on your dashboard to-do list, it's showing up on their dashboard to-do list. It, to well. it does. Adds it to the calendar as well. Okay. Does this include the items that the students create themselves? Do you mean the to-do items? Yes. Oh, the teacher cannot see the students' to-do items. No one can see the students' to-do items other than themselves. So they're not adding it to other people's calendars or anything. They're only adding it to their own. That's why mine said, like, bring running shoes. Um, so, okay, so that's, I mean, this is pretty much it. I knew this was going to be a short one. I know you're going to have questions, but um, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone that let me come visit them and observe their instructors and hear from your folks because that's how we get to do stuff like this because um, you guys know best. Yeah. Um, we may do an account option to, um, to make this a default. We're going to start with just adding it to that little cog and drawing a little attention like, hey, there's something new here so people can go test it out. But I think that this will become what people use. <laughs> it's season two, episode 15. Old school. They were still drawing. Oh, yeah. You can still flip back to the... Um, change the color from here. Um, not not right now. We're, we're not letting ch color change from, maybe eventually we'll allow color change from, from here um, on the course cards. Sorry, I didn't repeat the question. Okay, it's really hard to see you guys, but I think I see more hands. Blue shirt? Fall, yeah. <laughs> Fall in North America? <laughs> um, you, that's a... I don't, have a, I don't have a specific date. We want to make sure we have as much stuff done and it's really, really well tested. We may be looking for some beta users who want to test it out for us at some point in the near future. Please tell your CSM if you're interested in that and we'll get a list together and let you guys turn it on for your, your school and give us feedback. We love that. Another blue shirt. Yes, so, oh, that's the other thing about teacher, the teacher version. Oh, yes, so um, he's asking about published and unpublished state. So the teacher version of this will allow you to add and edit assignments. 
So you'll be able, just the same way you can in the teacher uh, app, you'll be able to do all the editing of like the metadata, like when it's due, whether or not it's published, that kind of stuff. Will this uh, bleed over into the course activity stream? Um, maybe, I, I, think, I think the problem with marrying this with the course activity stream is that the kids won't look at it anymore. I mean, how many of you guys have kids that focus on the activity stream more than the to-do list? It's the to-do list that they're gonna go to, so if we start putting all the activity stream stuff in there, we might, might lose it, but that new activity button does tell you anytime there's any activity in a discussion, so you still get the like, things are happening. Red shirt. Will this be what's in the mobile device as well? Um, I'm actually working with Peyton, the product manager. Um, they want to do this same thing. They're, they haven't done it yet, but they will get there. Oh, there's lots of thumbs up to that. I hope Peyton's here. Black shirt. Um, if there's no assignments in any of your stuff, we have a really cute little thing that says, hey, you don't have any assignments, go back to the other dashboard. It's a desert, actually, it's a desert scene. <laughs> Ain't nothing here. <laughs> um, so, do all the calendar events show up there? And I have it because we talk about our course, we automatically put like chart specific dates to the course calendar for like last day to add props. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not quite to calendar events showing here yet, but we are going to get there. What? To have events yeah, there? Yeah. Well, I guess that depends on the last last day uh, to add drop in every course is the same. Yeah. Um, does it show the official course name or the nickname? Um, I think it's showing the official course name. Well, it's the one that you type in, I know the field, I just don't know which one it's called. I think it's, no, it's the nickname. Okay, perfect. Right. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't remember the words we use exactly, but um, we basically, oh, I wish I had something with, I had a user with nothing in it. Um, yeah, we tell them that they should go into their courses or something, I can't remember exactly the words we use, but we have a little thing that's like, hey, there's nothing to, there's nothing here to do. Yes. Can they click on the course icon to go to the course? Yes, I didn't even demo that. You can go straight to the course from here or straight to the assignment. These are all completed. So I can go straight to the page. I can go straight to the quiz or the announcement. Um, these are all links directly to the, to the item. And the, um, oh, I have to really click. I can't tap, sorry. Um, and this, this is a link to the home page of the, the course, just like the regular tiles. Hopefully that's a decent looking page. Sweet. <laughs> oh, well today, when, when it loads, it loads to today. And I had scrolled up to show you guys something else. That's the only reason it wasn't showing you today right then. I scrolled down to today because I had scrolled all the way up. There's no sorting or filtering yet. Uh, you know, we, we tested that and it just wasn't used. Honestly, like students were just not really doing that. We thought, oh, they'll filter their courses down. They'll, fil they'll, they'll want to sort this. We had a billion different filter and, and sort options. I didn't touch it. Yeah. 
If there, oops. If there's no assignments on any course or uh, no assignments on your current course. It goes as far into the future as there are things. Yep. That there's nothing in your course? It, it, doesn't, it doesn't state every day there's nothing in your course today. Um, it says the days that you have things and the things that you have to do. Um, there are two other ways you can get into your course, either the courses tab or going back to the other dashboard. So it seemed a little silly to add a fourth, third and fourth way to get into your course. I want to, yeah. Uh, yes. Right. No, it just shows points. It doesn't show the weight of the assignment. Um, uh, it doesn't show assignment group. Nope. It just shows the what they need to do. So we we pretty much pulled this directly from the to do list. Um, yeah, it, it also doesn't tell you like which module or anything. It's it's really just the to-do list with, yes, just the facts, ma'am, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you'd like to participate in any of our user testing, um, which is how we got to here, um, go to the, on their way out. Ted will be in the back. Ted, you want to stand up? And he'll take a picture of your badge and contact you about uh, testing this stuff out and testing other things out in the future. Oh, yeah, the Canvas Lounge. That's a good place to go to. Okay, any more questions? Thanks, guys. Oh, one more. It'll come out in the fall. It'll still be behind that cog, so it's not going to like take over everybody's dashboard. Yeah, you have to select it. It'll just be an option. Um, and then at some point in the future, we may give accounts the option to default people to this. Um, we just, uh, to roll it out, we're not going to get it anybody's way because it'll happen during the school year. The North American school year. <laughs> Thanks, guys.